Word with Your Loved Ones, which is a free course. And the other one is called Channel Writing with Mom. And it's called with mom, but it can be with any loved one who is on the other side. So it's just a way to deepen the connection with your loved one. Because once they're on the other side, doesn't the connection doesn't ever go away. So it's just another way for you to connect with your loved ones. If you want to find out more about me and where to find out about where, where to get the courses, the online courses, you can go to internationalangelsnetwork.com forward slash Sue, or you can go to my website, suebroom.com. Now, some of the things we explore here on International Angels Network are spiritual entrepreneurship, fairies, angels, astrology, numerology, spirituality, Spirit Guides, Our Loved Ones, and so much more. If you want to be a guest on the show, you could go to internationalangelsnetwork.com forward slash guest and fill out the form. We also, we are a live call-in show, and if you don't have this phone number in your phone on speed dial, you're going to want to get it in there because it's the same phone number for every single host. Phone number is 1-516-453-9162. And if you want to ask a question of the host or the guest, you can press number 1 to get in the queue. And again, if you're an international caller, make sure and dial the 1. But the phone number again is 1-516-453-9162. And yes, I will be doing readings tonight. Now, if you are listening through blogtalkradio.com forward slash International Angels Network and you would like to ask a question of the host or the guest, you can click the Skype icon when we are live. And again, all you have to do is dial the 1 or press the 1 on your Skype keypad to get in the queue. If you've missed a show or if you'd like to go back and listen to your question that was on air, you can re-listen and listen again and again and share with your friends through iTunes, Google Play, Google Play, Google Play, <laughs> Podbean, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Chartable, Listen Notes, Overcast, our website, internationalangelsnetwork.com, as well as blogtalkradio.com forward slash International Angels Network. So again, you can share all of the replays with your friends as well. Great for going on a road trip. You can listen to International Angels Network shows over and over. Now, tonight's live show is brought to you by Audible by Amazon, and you can get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash international angels. And there's well over 450,000 titles to choose from, and that's for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, and MP3 player, or, or MP3 player. And also, again, that is audibletrial.com forward slash international angels. Now, Wednesday's shows are brought to you by Empowerment for You, which is the name of my business. But we also have our sponsor for International Angels Network is Sunday Sturgeon. So I want to thank you, Sunday, And she is the founder and CEO of Holistic Light Rejuvenation Center. All right, well, tonight, hopefully, you didn't get scared off by the title. Tonight, the angels wanted to talk about grief. Yes, grief with the angels. And it sounds kind of like a heavy topic. And sometimes grief can be. Sometimes in my life, I keep thinking, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm over grief. I'm done with it. <laughs> it's like, you know... I've come to realize and appreciate that grief is not one of those things that you're just over and done with. 
It is something that is just with you at just different levels at different times in your life. And one of the things that I definitely definitely learned when I was working on my channel writing with mom course is that, you know, as you are working through grief, your loved one can actually walk with you as you are working through the grief because it's the connection to them that you're actually missing. So that's where we want to go tonight, okay? So how do the angels help with grief? All right, well, I'm going to back up just a little bit and talk um, about grief just a smidgen, just to kind of set the, set the groundwork. Or, and, and grief is generally people think of grief as when they lose a loved one, when there's that connection with their loved one that has been lost because the loved one has passed away. Now, there are other times in our lives where grief comes up. And it could be a separation for some reason. You know, do, they may not have transitioned to the other side, but they may be away for some reason or there's some sort of separation. Other times that grief comes up is if you've lost a job or if you've moved. Now, I remember when I left, um, when I left Wisconsin, because I grew up in Wisconsin, I'd, I'd been there for over 50 years, and I'd been in the same uh, relatively close area within 30 miles of where I grew up for all of my life. And then I was, okay, I'm heading to Arizona. So it was quite the transition for me. But so a couple different things. That first Christmas when I was in Arizona I you know I was getting to know people so I did know a few people and I was um, close with a woman who she was also a volunteer at hospice and it's funny because um, I got along with her so well we'd go out to eat and we'd just get laughing and have a really good time and she was probably a year or so apart from how old my mom would have been so there probably was some of that connection there. Well, she invited me over to her family gathering on Christmas. I think it was Christmas Eve day. Is It was either that or the day before. And I thought, okay, yeah, I, I need to go. You know, I, I'm usually not, I usually don't do very well when there's all kinds of people that I don't know. And in fact, the, the more people in the room that I don't know at social gatherings like that, the, the quieter I get and the more in a corner I get. So the more the more I go within. Well, but I thought, okay, no, this is good. This will be fun. So I went. And it was I was there for a while. Everybody was super nice. I mean, she had uh, Let's see her and her husband. I, I knew her husband because some of the some of the things through hospice, he different events he would come to. And so I kind of knew him and she had three kids and they were two of them, I think, were married and had kids, something like that. And so there was a lot of people. It was a and she had other friends there and she uh, was a large Italian family is how she always referred to herself. So there's a lot of people. Well, I was there for a while, and I was talking with people, and all of a sudden, I just got this overwhelming feeling of, okay, I got to get out of here. I just got to get out of here, and I, I just wanted to cry, and so I, you know, let her know that this was, this was great. I was having a great time, but I, it's time for me to go, and so... As I'm driving home, I'm crying, and I'm just sobbing. And I'm like, what is going on? Well, what I realized, it seems so silly that I had to think about it and really figure it out, but I was grieving all of the Christmases that I didn't get to have with my family, that I didn't get to have with my mom. 
growing up. And she had such a close knit family. It was a large family, but it was they were all close. They were all laughing and seemed like all having a really good time together. And it was just I just I didn't have that. And so it was like I was grieving all of those Christmases that I wasn't able to have and all of the future ones that I still wouldn't have with my mom, my dad. So, and that was, okay, so let me see. My dad had been gone for 27 years and my my mom, she had been gone on the other side for 38. So it was definitely a long time. And so that's why I say, I keep thinking, it's like, oh yeah, I got this grief thing under, under wraps. And uh, things just come up. And that's okay that things come up, you know. And, and I think that I was talking to someone the other day. This is the lady that cuts my hair. And she said, you know, I never get the feeling that my mom's around. And she goes, you know, when my mom was here, before she ha- got cancer, she would always say, I'm not coming back. When I'm gone, I'm not, com- I'm not coming back. And she feels that's why her mom was on the other side and not coming back. Even though, you know, in talking with her, she knows that her mom is is there with her because of all the things she's learned from her over the years, all the things her mom has taught her, and all of the things that she does with her kids and her grandkids that her mom did with her, you know, with her and her sister, as well as her and her sister have the beauty shop that her mom created. So I think her mom is totally with her all the time, even though she doesn't feel her. Now, sometimes the reason people don't feel their loved ones is because they are grieving, because they just aren't to the point yet that they're ready to make that um, another connection to their loved ones. And so now let's, let's bring in the angels before I continue with with grieving and some things that you can do, let's bring in some angels. And the reason I always like to bring in angels is because they help. It's like the words I'm hearing is they help soften the blow, but they help keep us feeling safe. They share their love. And depending on what their specialty is, they actually allow you to connect with your loved one a little bit easier. So for those of you that listen to me on a regular basis, you know, I always like to clear the energy, clear our energy, clear the space. So we're clear, you know, clear away, basically clear away the dust from the day. And I had kind of an interesting day, which I'm not going to get into, but I had kind of an interesting day. So let's clear away the dust from the day. Thank you, Archangel Michael, for helping with that. And then breathe in divine love. I always like to breathe in divine love. And then call on the angels. And some of the angels that I would call in, if you're going to be working with your loved one, working with grief, is, of course, Archangel Michael. Of course, I call on him for everything. Archangel Raphael. He is wonderful for healing and for healing a grieving heart, as well as for healing relationships. So if your loved one is on the other side and you feel that there's unfinished business, Archangel Raphael is a good one to have on hand with you. Also, Archangel Gabriel. Gabriel is really good at communication. And... There's also Archangel Azrael, and he's known as the angel of death, but he's so gentle. And even though your loved one is on the other side already, some you may want to call on Archangel Azrael. And I'm not saying these are the angels that you absolutely have to have. These are just the ones that I'm recommending, but it's entirely up to you which archangels you call on. Now, the other one that you might want to consider is Archangel Jeremiah. He works with life reviews, 
And the reason I feel like he might be a good one is for one of the exercises when you're working with grief, one of the exercises has to do with memories. And I think when working with Archangel Jeremiah, you know, going down memory lane with a life review, I think that he would be a really good one to call in. A really good one to call in. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to have to... Claudia says my necklace is rubbing and it's my necklace is hiding, so it's not my necklace. So let me see if I can do something else. I want to make sure you guys can hear decently. So bear with me. We'll see if that's better. Okay, so. Oh, good. Thank you. So we have Archangel Michael. We have Archangel Raphael. We have Archangel... Gabriel, and we have Azrael, if you would like, and we have Jeremiah, if you would like. So we have our energy clear, we have divine love, we are surrounded by these angels, by these archangels, as well as, of course, your guardian angels. I don't talk about guardian angels as much, but guardian angels, I believe, I personally believe that everyone has two guardian angels with them at all times. So... Now, one of the first things that I recommend when you are grieving a loved one is to journal about some of the happy memories that you had. And there's, there's a couple reasons. When I was um, first starting to do this, the reason I did it was because there were so few things that I remembered about my mom and what she would take us to do. So I wanted to write down as much as I could so I wouldn't forget. Now, I do have a younger brother who he remembers stuff so much better than I do. So sometimes it's like, okay, Steve, can you fill me in on the details on this? But that's one of the things that you can do is you can journal about the happy memories. And you can journal about the other memories. I'm not saying to exclude them if you want to if you want to journal about them as well. Because it's very healing to journal about it. You can call on your loved one. Make sure that you're surrounded by your angels. And then journal about it. Journal about the different memories that you that you that come to mind. Journal about the happier ones. Journal about the ones that maybe you wish would have been different. And something, you know, a trick I learned a long time ago, you can do this with dreams, you can do this with memories too, is you can change them. If you didn't like the way that that, that particular memory, if you wanted it to have a different ending, go into a meditation and change it. And you can do that. You can absolutely do that with dreams. You can change them with memories. If you want to shift them just a little bit, you can do that. Journal about how you would have liked it to be. So that's something. And it really helps with grief. As you're, as you're journaling, as you're writing you know, about a memory, whether it's a happy one or not, if there's tears that come, allow them to come. I know some people feel that they, it, it's almost like they feel like they have grief as their badge of honor. And if they, if they don't carry around this grief, that they're going to forget their loved one or that their loved one is going to forget about them. And that's like the furthest thing from the truth. All the grief is doing when you have it on your shoulders, carrying it around with you, like, you know, this, this huge weight, it's just hurting you. It's the connection between you and your loved one. Think of it as a, a love connection that's always there. And the more that you feed the love the stronger and clearer that connection gets. So if there's grief, which, yes, absolutely, if someone has just transitioned or it's an anniversary date 
or a birthday or there's you're visiting someplace where you used to go with your loved one, it's going to bring things up and allow those things to come up, allow those emotions to come up and feel them and work through them. But work through them with your loved one, you know, because they were a part of that memory as well. So journaling about happy memories and another thing that you can do that really helps with um, the, the connection, it helps with grieving, is writing a letter to your loved one. The letter can be on anything you want, but a couple suggestions is letting them know all of the things that you learn from them. Maybe all the things that you appreciated about them. Maybe just all, thank you, thanking them for all the times that you shared together. And that's another thing that you can do that actually strengthens the connection. Because you're feeding that love connection that you have. The stronger the love connection is, I believe, the more signs you're going to be you're going to be receiving from your loved ones. Whether it's coins, flowers, numbers, all of these things, it doesn't matter. All of these things you're going to be receiving. Now, in the notes for if you are listening on um, through YouTube. At the very beginning of the messages, I did put uh, one of the radio shows I did. This was a long time. I had to search for this one because it's like, I've n- I know I've done one on signs from your loved ones. And it was in December of 2017. But I did put the link in the listing of, um, in the chat room on YouTube. But if anybody else is looking, it's on blog talk radio forward slash blogtalkradio.com forward slash international angels network and if you look at the past shows go all the way back to december 7th 2017 angel talk with sue signs from your loved ones and i know other hosts have done different shows on signs from your loved ones as well we all you know say very similar things we just say it in our own way so Listen, go search and find other hosts that have done the same type talk. You'll hear things probably in a different way, and it, it might give you some inspiration of different signs that you're maybe already receiving from your loved ones. So now we have just a few minutes before the half hour mark, and I'm hoping to do just a short meditation. I don't know. I should have warned Claudia if she wants to put on some music, she can, but it's not absolutely necessary. But I'd like you to just get yourself comfortable. And if there is one of your loved ones that you really are missing, you know, maybe it's the time of year, maybe it's close to their anniversary. Thank you, Claudia. Just have them in your mind and ask them to join you for this meditation. We've already cleared our energy and we've already called in divine love. We already have angels on hand. So now call in your loved one. what I'd like you to do just imagine you and your loved one are walking side by side along a path this path it's pounded dirt so there's no dust it's very quiet You're walking along just side by side. And you're just 
feeling their energy. You're just experiencing who your loved one is. You don't have to remember anything. You just have to feel and experience the love that you're sharing right in this moment as you're just walking quietly together. Do you want to hold hands? You can hold hands. If you just want to walk side by side, just walk side by side. Just feel the energy, feel the love that you have for them and feel the love that they have for you. It's as if this magical bubble of love encircles the two of you. That's all you feel is love. The angels have you cocooned around the outside of this magical bubble with your loved one. You're just walking along. If you want to stop and just stand, you can do that. If you want to keep walking, you can keep walking. But just feel your loved one. Feel their love. And in this moment, that's all there is. That's all there is, is the love you share. You can let them know how much you miss them if you want. You don't have to say it. You can just think it. And as you're spending this time with them, it's as if that love connection gets strengthened gets stronger somehow. It's almost as if you can feel it strengthening as you're standing next to them, as you're walking next to them. Because after all, there is only this moment, this present moment right now. Thank your loved one for spending this time with you. Knowing that you can come back to this moment again and again and stay as long as you would like. So thank them for spending this time with you. And if you want to hug them, kiss them, or just stand next to them, let them know how much you appreciate and love them. And then slowly come back into your bodies. Come back into the room that you're sitting in. The 
You can start moving your hands and your toes coming all the way back into your body. Still feeling, it's like you're basking in the love, spending this time with your loved one, but coming back into your, into your knowing. And then whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. So just to remember where that meditation started, it was about 25 after. So if you want to listen to the replay and listen to that meditation again, it was about 25 after that we started. And it it was short, but it is such a strong meditation, a strong connection with you and your loved one that you can do that right there is very healing for a grieving heart. So I hope you enjoyed that. Okay, so now that you're all back in your bodies and you all have smiles on your face, if you want to call into the show, I'll be doing calls pretty quick here. The phone number is 1-516-453-9162. Then you can press number one to get in the queue. Also, I wanted to share with you some of the things that are going on at International Angels Network. Uh, We will be helping those spiritual entrepreneurs out there in your spiritual business. So if you want to check that out, go out to internationalangelsnetwork.com forward slash directory. That may be something that you want to look into or also internationalangelsnetwork.com forward slash membership. And this is for people who are doing readings, energy healing, teachers, mentors, coaches, metaphysical online store. For anyone that has a spiritual based business or if you're a spiritual practitioner and you want to expand your business, go check out internationalangelsnetwork.com. You very well may find something exactly what it is that you're looking for. Also, I wanted to let you know that Diane Morgan and Susie Parrott, they do have their monthly program that is going on. It's Connecting with Angels. And the way I understand it is you can sign up for once a month or for multiples. And they are going through angels and information about the angels, different tools and exercises that you can use working with the angelic realms. Excuse me. So you can go check that out. If you want more details, go to the website uniteinthelight.com. So again, it's Unite in the light.com and that is our very own Diane Morgan and Susie Pear putting those on together. Also, uh, upcoming shows, we have Thursday, which is the Alex Levy show, Saturday, which is Angelic Light with Susie Parrott. Sundays we have a mystical connection with Claudia Iberia. <laughs> Let me say that one again. Sunday. We have Mystical Connection with Claudia Ibera. And then Tuesday, we have Angel Navigation with Diane Morgan. And next Wednesday, you are back with me. So again, phone number 1-516-453-9162. And you can press number 1 to get in the queue. Okay. Trying to think, which cards am I using tonight? Okay, so... First caller, we have Jay from Canada. Jay from Canada, are you with me? Yes, I am. Thank you, Sue, for taking my call. How are you doing tonight, Jay? Ah, not too bad. I'm a little bit uh, razzled right now, though. Um, what's, what's going on? Well, I there's a, uh, I was going to go for a spirituality for grief but uh, the, the class was full and 
uh, the person hosting it uh, made an attempt to uh, to get some registration information. So, yeah, some little. I thought I'd be going to the class, but no, it was uh, class was full. But I don't know why it was full when I applied a lot earlier. So I don't know. It wasn't meant to be. <laughs> well, have you been listening to the whole show tonight? I just I just got in, so sorry about that. Oh. About fifty minutes in. You are going to have to go back and listen because uh, that's what I was doing tonight's show on was grief with the angels. So. You'll have to go back and check it out. And I also, I do mm-hmm. have a free online class. Also, if you go out to my website, subroom.com, I have two courses. One of them is called Memories Shared with Your Loved Ones, which is the free course. And it helps you connect with your loved ones in a different way, in a loving way. And also, I have Channel Writing with Mom. And I get into um, more in grief on the Channel Writing with Mom, but the free course also has a lot of good information and a lot of healing. So go check it out. Oh, sounds interesting. I will it check is. it out. They are interesting. <laughs> so you want? I'm using the nudges from your spirit cards tonight. So, Jade, you want to see what card I pulled for you? Sure. Yeah, yes, please. Thanks. So it says, take the leap and the net will appear. Take, oh, sorry, it broken up there. It says, take the net. Mm-hmm. Or, I'm sorry, I'm reading it wrong. Take the leap, and the net will appear. So basically, it's, you know what? Take that leap of faith, and everything will work out. So I don't know if there's something that you're holding back a little bit on, but it's time to, and this is this is the year that I have been hearing so much about as, you know what, there's no holding back. So That's if right. there's something that you are feeling that, hey, this is right on with what I want to do, you need to move forward on it. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. That makes yep. sense. All right. I heard about that too this year. Yeah book this year just go for it yes more than any other year i don't know why but it's this year for some reason absolutely so this is your year jay so go for it (laughs) and go check out my courses i think they'll be i think you'll enjoy them yeah i just took a look at it right now briefly so i just uh, marked it on my website so all right thank you very much you are very welcome have a good night thanks for listening jay you too bye 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 Miss Belinda from North Carolina, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hey, girl. <laughs> Hello. How are you? I'm good, just staying in the house, staying dry. <laughs> there's too much rain. You know, there's rain and snow. They're talking, so this is for those people that don't realize that it snows in Arizona. Um, I believe it's above 7,000 feet elevation. Between now and Saturday, there is a possibility of close to, this is the high end, of 40 inches. Yes, that's a four zero. Okay, I know I've seen that on the weather channel where flags staff are getting hit. <laughs> oh, yeah, flag, flag is getting hit, hit big time. So is the city I used to live in. They're getting, I think, 12 to 18 or something. So I'd rather have rain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what can we do for you, darling? I just wanted to get a message, please. Well, let's see. None of the cards are flying out, so let's see. This card feels like it's from Miss Belinda. Ooh, gratitude is the answer. (laughs) Yeah, there's that sneaky little laugh. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. I've been working on it. I've been working on it. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you, you know, gratitude is one of those things, and, and it, it gets you out of things somehow without without using it as, I'm going to use gratitude to get me out of this jam. 
it's like, no, it doesn't work quite that way. It's just put gratitude into your day as part of your practice. And things just, there's less jams that you get yourself into. And things just move along that much smoother. Yeah. Like, you make rice when we're doing something else from the kicks me in the butt. <laughs> Well, and I think, you know, gratitude is also, it's one of those things that um, if you have the gratitude cards, you can pull a card a day and kind of keep that as your inspiration. If you're following along, let's see, do I have, yes, I do. The gratitude, the 52 weeks of gratitude journal. This is awesome because there's a story every single week. And Actually, my week is coming up. So for those of you that are part of the gratitude movement, my week is coming up week 13, which is the last week of March. So I'll be on uh, the 52 Weeks of Gratitude Movement Facebook page doing Facebook Lives. So, okay. so it's all about gratitude, Miss Belinda. All righty. Well, I know one thing, I'm grateful for you ladies and the network. <laughs> well, we are grateful for you too. So just remember, it's a two-way street. All right, Miss Belinda. Okay, thank you very much. You are very welcome. Have a good night, sweetie. Talk to you later. I, I love you. I love you too. All right, we have Nisa from New York. Hello. How are you doing tonight? Hi. Thank you for taking my call. Um, I was wondering if you see any new opportunities coming for me um, financially or any other work-wise opportunities. So what are you doing to uh, open the doors for the opportunities? Everything. So, like, you're getting out networking and meeting people and getting online? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Are you also doing, like, visualizations? Yes. Okay. Good. So, this is so funny. Um, I just took a drink of water when you were talking. And the card that yes. I pulled for you is drink more water. Yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> well, true. <laughs> well, well, and... and I tell myself that and I still don't do it. <laughs> I need to drink a lot more water, seriously. Well, so start listening to yourself because here's what it feels like. and Because it, it's kind of a strange answer to your question. But it feels like it has yes. something to do with the flow. Because it, it feels okay. like the less... It feels like when you're not drinking your water, it's like things get stuck. And the more you drink the water, the more in the flow you are. Okay, that's kind of true, too. Yeah. So Yeah, I feel you. that way. <laughs> and oh, the other thing, you know, link. <laughs> the other thing I would, I would specifically, specifically call on Archangel Michael, Archangel Raphael, yeah. Archangel Shamuel, it's C H A M U E L. He's the finder angel. He finds things. And mm -hmm. Archangel Gabriel, actually, and and a fifth one, Archangel Uriel, for some um, because it feels like there might be some ways that you're not looking that are kind of outside of the right. box, different ways that you might get okay. inspiration that way. So, yeah, yeah, I'm looking right. at that too. All right. Thank All right. you. You are so very welcome. Have a good night. Good night. Bye. Bye. Okay, so then we have a YouTube live comment from our very own Diane Morgan. She says, Beautiful meditation, Sue. I was walking with my brother and then my dad and my mom. <laughs> okay. Knocked on the bubble. <laughs> Family reunion of hugs and love. That is so cool, Diane. I love that. <laughs> Knocked on the bubble. 
That is hilarious. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give the phone number out one more time. Um, and if you are on Blog Talk, listening to the show that way, you can ask a question in the chat room. And if you are on YouTube, you can ask a question that way as well. Phone number again, one 453 9162 all right, next we have Phil from Pennsylvania. Hello? How you doing, Phil? Um, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I could do better, but, you know, you know how life goes. <laughs> well, just keep yeah. saying, I am doing better. <laughs> I am doing better. I am. There you go. Better. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so what's, yeah. what's going on with you, Mr. Phil? Um, I recently discovered that um, I have diabetes, um, huh. and I'm I'm kind of struggling with that right now. So I'm feeling, you know, very insecure. Huh. Um, yeah. So. All right. I was just wondering. All right. So let's see. What, let's see what we got. And so, I would absolutely call on Archangel Raphael. The healer, the healer guy. Yeah. But it also feels like Archangel Michael because he will help with the confidence level. Mm, and interesting. I, interesting. Yeah. I, and I, I feel like, um, I, I don't, you know, Facebook has a lot of different groups, different social medias. They have different groups, support groups, where if you want to talk to somebody and get some ideas and you can go that route just to kind yeah. of, because okay, I'm sure so, that there's so some. How would you recommend calling upon? I'm not, I'm not sure. How would I recommend calling on the angels? Yeah. So first I always like to, just like at the very beginning, I always, um, about halfway through the show, maybe tonight, <clears throat> I like to clear my energy and then I fill with divine love. And then you can ask the angels, Archangel Raphael, Archangel Mike, I would like you to come and be by my side. And if you want to very specifically say, I need more confidence with learning the different things that I might have to do now. And I want to learn how I can um, regulate and what I need to do. So it's it's funny because the card I pulled for you is what you seek is seeking you. So what that feels like to me is like you're looking for help and help is ready, is right there just waiting, which is what the angels do. They're just waiting for you to ask. They're standing there twiddling their thumbs. But you, all you got to do, Phil, is ask. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, it does. But, I mean, it's just, how can, how can we, how can we expect help from an angel if they're niggers? <laughs> you think I want to be with No. So, angels... And I will ask for you, Phil, but this is something I would encourage you to listen to the replay. And angels, if you could surround Phil with your loving presence so all Phil can feel is the loving and healing energy that you have. And just allow him to feel safe in your arms. And allow him to accept your love. Phil, that will help. That will help. So everyone who's listening live and on replay, if you could send love to Phil and keep him in your prayers. Thank you. Okay, next call we have is 
hopefully I'm going to get the name right. It's from North Carolina. It's Latimer. Am I saying that right? Yes. All right. I got it right. That's like that's a really cool name. Yeah. <laughs> you did. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> so what what can we do for you tonight? Well, well, I just uh, got to say on Monday, I was diagnosed with uh, liver cirrhosis. And I've been losing weight for quite some time. I mean, I lost around 60, around 60 pounds, essentially, in the in like past five months. And uh, it's um, everybody, well, what else can I blame other than the bottle? <laughs> you, know, you know what they say about people who use the name Vladimir. <laughs> And um, sort of, uh, this is like my first day, you know, when, when I'm not fucking myself to sleep, actually. Um, you know, situation is kind of hard, but cirrhosis is like kind of like a nail in the coffin, I would say. Well, it, sound, it, it does. I'm just curious, essentially. Go ahead. You know, I'm kind of like trying to switch from one kind of spirits to the other. You know what I mean? You know, in the past several days. Okay, I missed that last sentence that you said. I, I'm trying to switch from, well, I'm trying to find something spiritual which is not in the spirits. Got it. And, you know, I always have like a kind of good look in life, but uh, it's, um, yeah. <laughs> okay. 